All right, action, reaction, and conservation of momentum. So let's let's link back about Newton's third law. For every um, action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Again, equal forces, opposite directions. One's positive, one's negative. And then um, Newton's second law, F um, F net equals more mass times acceleration, or acceleration is equal to F net over M. We've applied it both ways. Um, let's look at how those can be applied to collisions. So we're uh, taking a golf golf club and we're hitting a golf ball. The, the, the club's moving rightward, and it experiences a leftward force when it hits the golf ball. The golf ball experiences a rightward force. The forces have equal magnitude in opposite direction. So the force that the golf, the, the club puts on the ball is equal to the one that the ball puts on the club. And even in billiards, um, we got a seven ball moving to the, moving to the right, it hits a leftward force when the eight ball experiences a rightward force. The forces have equal magnitude in opposite direction. Again, the eight and the, when the seven hits the eight, the forces are equal but opposite. Um, while driving down a road, a firefly strikes the windshield of a bus and makes quite obvious mess in front of the face of the driver. This is definitely Newton's third law of motion. The firefly hit the bus and the bus hit the fire firefly. Which of the two forces is greater, the force on the firefly or the force on the bus? Think of an answer, and the answer is the forces are equal. They both are the same. The reason the firefly smashes and the bus does not is because the firefly, with such a small mass, hits the hits the uh, bus with such a great acceleration that the force destroys it. While the force that happens on the bus, the bus is so big and such has such a large mass that the acceleration change from the force hitting of the firefly is negligible. In fact, it's probably almost impossible to notice. On the bus. So um, if you ever shot a gun, um, a rifle or recoil, the recoil is a result of action reaction force pairs. A gunpowder explosion creates hot gases that expand outward, allowing the rifle to push forward on the bullet. So consistent with the third law of motion, the bullet pushes backwards upon the rifle. So the acceleration of the recoil rifle, so the bullet shoots out, and then the acceleration on the rifle. Well the forces are the same. But the bullet has such a small mass that its acceleration is so big, while the mass of the uh, gun, or rifle in this case, is so small. I mean, the mass is so big that the acceleration is so small. So the answer is B. The acceleration is way less than that of the bullet. Um, Kent Swim, who was taking physics for the third year in a row, has rowed his boat within three feet of the dock. He decides to jump onto the dock and turn around and dock his boat. Why is this not a good strategy? Well, if you think about it, the force that he applies to the boat to jump off will force the boat to kick away from the dock. So if Kent's here and jumps this way to the dock, the boat's going to get an equal force that's going to make it go back this way. And his boat's going to go out, out into the lake, and he's not going to be able to dock his boat. That's an equal and opposite. Um, another example, a clown on an ice rink with a large medicine ball. If the clown throws the ball forward, then he is set into backwards motion with the same momentum as the ball's forward momentum. What would happen to the clown if he goes through the motion of throwing the ball without actually letting go? Explain. Think about it. Okay, so what would happen is the clown would go backwards when he, when he makes the motion, but then when he pulls the ball back, he would go forward. So, if, in fact, he wouldn't go anywhere. He would stay the same as long as he holds on to the ball. Um, Day, Mel, and Chanel are astronauts on a spaceship. They each have the same mass and the same strength. Dale and Mel decide to play catch with Chanel, intending to throw her back and forth between them. Dale throws Chanel to Mel, and the game begins. Describe their motion as the game continues, if we assume that each throw involves the same amount of push. And how many throws will the game last? Well, right away, Dale will push Chanel in this direction. When he does, Dale will kick back. Chanel will hit Mel, and they'll both go in this direction. Mel will try to will push Chanel back this way. Will, will, will Mel will continue to go this way. Dale will go this way, and then Chanel will slowly be heading this way. And it will take only two throws. And it will be the first one of Dale before he moves, and then Mel before he moves. But in the end, it will be three people moving in space, going nowhere until they hit the walls of the spaceship, I guess. 
So it'll be two throws. Okay, um, momentum conservation. Newton's third law, forces are equal and opposite. Let's say the time that the forces are applied are the same. So, or well, they will be the same. Um, so we know the impulses are equal and opposite, which means the change in momentums are equal and opposite. And this is a big one. Momentum changes are equal in magnitude and opposite in directions. So this is the law of conservation of momentum then. If the momentum lost by one object is gained by another, then the total amount is constant, always true. So the momentum never changes. It's always constant in a collision or any, in any uh, situation. So let's see here. Fullback and linebacker, positive 100, negative 120. We add 100 to negative 120, we get negative 20. So when they combine and, and, and the linebacker tackles the fullback, you can see that the momentum is 20 in the negative direction. Medicine ball and the clown. So the clown is standing still. The medicine ball is thrown to the clown. The clown catches it. The medicine ball has a momentum of 80. The clown is zero. When the medicine ball hits the clown, they both have a momentum of 80. And momentum is conserved. So let's think about when fighting fires. A firefighter must use great caution to hold a hose that emits large amounts of water at high speeds. Why would such a task be difficult? Well, if the firefighter is shooting the hose out this way, then the opposite force is going to be going this way. And if the firefighter is not ready for that force, it will send him on his behind. He will go flying back. So that's why you have to be ready for that water come flying out because that high, that water with high speed is going to make a lot of momentum that you have to fight against to make sure you don't fall down as the firefighter. Okay, we got a truck and a Volkswagen in a headline collision. Which one experiences the greatest force of impact? They're the same. Which one has the greater impulse? They're the same. Which one has the greatest momentum change? It's the same, but they will have a different acceleration because they have different masses. Remember, momentum is mass times, acceler mass times velocity or change in velocity when we talk about momentum change. The Volkswagen has less mass than the truck. Therefore, the Volkswagen will have the greatest change in velocity, which means it will have the greatest acceleration. So the Volkswagen will have the greatest acceleration. Miles to go and Ben traveling are riding in a bus at highway speed in a nice summer day when an ugly bug splatters upon the windshield. Miles and Ben begin discussing the physics of the situation. Miles suggests that the momentum change of the bug is much greater than that of the bus. After all, after all argues Miles, there are no noticeable change in the speed of the bus compared to the obvious change in the speed of the bug. Ben disagrees entirely, arguing that both the bug and the bus encounter the same force, momentum change and impulse. Who do you agree with and support your answer? Think about it. And the answer is Ben is right because they do have the same force, the same momentum change and the same impulse. What's different is that the bus has such a large, much larger mass in the bug that the, ch that the change in velocity of the bus is negligible compared to the change in velocity in the bug, which is going to be great. I mean, huge, which would then will kill the bug. Huh? Um, if a ball is projected upward from the ground with 10 units momentum, what is the momentum of recoil of the earth? And do we feel this? Explain. Well, it's going to be 10 units of momentum back onto the earth, but do we feel this? And the answer is no, because the earth has such a huge mass in relation to that of the ball that its change in velocity is negligible, unfeelable in this case, because the mass of the earth is so much bigger than that of the ball. Now we're going to put some math with this stuff. So this one goes along with the last question. If a five kilogram bowling ball is projected upward with a velocity of two meters per second, then what is the velocity, the recoil velocity of the earth? And there's the mass of the earth is six times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Do it now. And a 120 kilogram lineman moving west at two meters per second tackles an 80 kilogram football fullback moving east at eight meters per second. After the collision, both players move east at two meters per second. Draw a vector diagram in which the before and after collision momenta of each player is represented by a momentum vector. Then label the magnitude of each momentum vector. A lot to think about there. Do it now. All right, so we got five kilogram bowling ball projected upward with a velocity of two meters per second. Then what is the recoil velocity of the Earth with a mass of six times 10 to the 24th kilogram? So here's what we got. We got the Earth, which is really big. 
so a bowling ball going upward, all right? So the bowling ball has five kilograms of mass, and it has a velocity of two meters per second. So it has a momentum of mass times velocity of 10. So that momentum is gonna be the same as the Earth, right? So if momentum equals mass times velocity, and I know the momentum's 10, and the mass of the Earth is, what do, what do we have it at? Six times 10 to the 24th, and it should be a little farther to six eggs, times velocity, I just divide 10 by six times 10 to the 24th, and that will tell me the velocity of the Earth because of this. Now, the big thing about this problem, and I'm getting my calculator up here, is you have to understand that this is gonna be an extremely small number. Like 10 divided by six times 10 to the 24th gives me 1.7 times 10 to the negative 24th. All right, that means this velocity is like minimal. Like That's why the Earth doesn't feel it, because the number's way too small. To the negative 24th, that is, you take this decimal, move it 23 places to the left and put zeros in there. And that's how small it is. So that velocity is negligible, not noticeable. And plus, if you think about all the other things happening on the Earth at the same time, they're gonna to start to cancel each other out anyway. And so even these small velocities, even though you can't feel them, are gonna be canceled out by other things going on. So therefore, the Earth is so big that the change in momentum doesn't affect it at all, okay? And then the uh, second problem on this slide is that you have a 120 kilogram lineman moving west at two meters per second tackles an 80 kilogram fullback moving east at eight meters per second. After the collision, both players move east at two meters per second. So we gotta draw a vector diagram and then we'll do some solving. So we have a lineman. So we have 100 and it's moving west. So the lineman, um, 120 kilogram, is moving west at two meters per second. And then we have our fullback here that's a little bit smaller. He's 80 kilograms. He is quite a bit smaller. But moving a little bit faster at eight meters per second. So there's our two things happening, okay? So this is before. And then it says they, they come together and they both players move east at two meters per second. So they collide. 120 kilograms, and if we're going to say they're connected since they both move together at two meters per second. So that's what, that's what the picture looks like. Okay, and I think mathematically we'll prove that the uh, that the momentum is equal. But here's before fullback lineman, boom, and then they once they collide, they stick together. Okay, a baseball player holds a bat loosely and bunts a ball. Express your understanding of momentum conservation by filling in the tables below. Do it now. All right, so next slide, we got this bat and ball. Um, it says the player holds a bat loosely and bunts a ball, and we wanna see what we know about momentum. So we know momentum is conserved. So let's talk about total momentum first. So the bat's going 80 this way, the ball's going negative 40 this way. They come together, you add these two together, your total momentum is going to be 40. Since momentum is conserved after the collision, it's also going to be 40. And, oh, and another number here, so this is 10. Okay. So if I know that the total is 40 and the ball is going 10, I know these two added together must equal 40. That means after the collision, the bat has to be 30. And again, these two will equal this, these two will equal that, but these two are always going to be equal. And you can see the ball's momentum change and the bat's momentum change is both 50, which is what it should be to keep those two equal. A Tomahawk cruise missile is launched in the barrel of a mobile missile launcher. Neglect friction. Express your understanding of momentum conservation by filling in the tables below. Do it now. So we got a Tomahawk cruise missile launched from the barrel of a mobile missile launcher, um, no friction, and we want to express conservation of momentum. So right away we know missile plus launcher equals total. My total here, we put my total after the collision, so that'll be zero. 
So 5,000 and plus this will have to equal zero. Well, 5,000 plus negative 5,000 equals zero. So the missile shoots off here, pushes back on the launcher. And that's the momentum that pushes back on the launcher. Momentum is conserved.